Hello, everyone. Welcome to Oracle Analytics Live for November 2022. This will be our last one of the year, so we're happy to have you with us today and give you a great update for what's coming uh, in 2023. So feel free to introduce yourself in the um, in the chat where you're coming from. Uh, we will be answering Q&A at the end, so if you want to post that in the Q&A section. Um, and as mentioned in the intro, this will, the presentation and the recording will be available on Cloud Customer Connect in the coming days if you want to reference anything that we talk about. So this is our safe harbor statement. I'll just give you a second to look at that. Looks like Eric from Montana, Minnesota, New York City. Hello, I'm in New York City. <laughs> Let's move on here. Okay, so for our agenda today, we have some updates from the product strategy team. We're gonna take a look at the OAC roadmap, what you can expect coming out in January and uh, early spring of next year. Uh, we have the FAW roadmap as well. We're gonna have lots of demos for you and a live Q&A session at the end as always. So let's hop into it. Starting with our product strategy update. I'm Alex Toothman, I'll be the host for today. And I wanted to make everyone aware of our new uh, in-product survey that is available. Now this is, um, you can quickly access it through uh, your homepage. If you go to the top right and click on your icon, then go down to leave a review. This is information that we're just taking for the Oracle side. It's uh, not being released to the public. We're reviewing it and we're taking uh, your recommendations to heart and what we can do better for the product. So again, you can either access it by um, your your homepage or through this link. And I'll put that uh, in the chat in case uh, you have trouble finding it. And next we have Fari. Hey Alex, hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. This is Fari Javon Mahdi, I'm a principal product manager with the product and strategy team. And I wanted to walk you through some updates in our menu. All right, so I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the about section in the Oracle Analytics UI. So you can find that on once you click on your initials avatar included on the top right corner of the UI. Um, it previously used to show the release version that you were using. And now we have added a menu to include all the new features released in this recent version that you're using. So it helps you to understand what are some of the new features. It has links to the help documentation so you can understand how to use these new features. And it will be updated with every new release um, that we, uh, we will release or every new version that we will release. Um, I hope you find that really helpful and all the users uh, will have access to it. So back to you, Alex. Thanks, Fari. Moving over to Ben. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. My name is Ben. I'm Senior Director of Product Strategy for Oracle Analytics. Uh, in the next slide, I'm going to show you also that uh, we are now working with Oracle Research. So if you are doing any research, if you want to, um, to do anything with analytics, feel free to contact us. Uh, feel free to uh, ask questions about the research. Oracle is helping researchers all over the world uh, in their discovery. We are giving you access to Oracle Cloud. We are uh, giving you access to resources, to people inside Oracle with PhD, with deep knowledge in AI, analytics, science, and more. Um, in the next slide, I'm going also to speak about uh, some goodies that we have. I'm not totally sure we will be able to send anything, but if you are interested for, for having maybe for Christmas some Oracle goodies, tell us yes or no. I will maybe select a few people and we will maybe send a few goodies. So again, I'm not guaranteeing anything, but we will see if we can select a few people. Uh, and again, it could be a pencil, it could be anything else, so we'll see. Uh, in the next slide, we will keep the, the poll for maybe a minute, so don't worry. In the next slide, I'm going to show you two different demos that we created recently. We continue to double down and create more and more. So I'm going to share my screen really quick. Um, again, this is Oracle Analytics. You can uh, go to the Oracle Analytics instance. We have a public instance also like that. 
Um, I'm going to show you one demo that we created for healthcare using Oracle AI image classification. We ingested 2,800 images. We created a custom AI model to recognize pituitary tumor in the brain, meningioma tumor or glioma tumor or no tumor. And then we tested few different uh, MRI images to see if it was recognizing the right tumor. So you can see that in live, I'm selecting um, a specific brain tumor here, which is TGG. So GG normally glioma, so a meningioma, sorry. So it's recognizing some of them. I can continue to select few other brain pictures and AI, it's going to recognize few uh, different ways to see if it's, for example, a tumor or not. So here at 90%, it's recognizing that this is maybe a glioma tumor which is pretty accurate. And we can continue with different pictures. So again, we are not replacing healthcare. People are doing that way better than us with some um, uh, amazing company, but it's just to show you the integration between AI and analytic. And obviously you can use Oracle AI to recognize plane, car, anything you want with image classification. Another thing, Gabriel is going to do a, a way longer REST API connector um, demo, but I wanted to show you one demo we created. This is the SNP 500. You might be familiar with this specific picture on Wall Street Bet. Uh, you can see that in one click, it's going to generate five API call, take data from financial modeling website, and telling us, for example, Microsoft is a little bit done today, Amazon also, Tesla a lot, and you can go to different type of stock and see the data in real time. It's available now in Oracle Analytics. Um, so feel free to use it. And I will show you also how to access that. We will put the link. If you click, you will have access directly to this one here. So thank you very much. And um, Alex, you can take it from here. All right, thanks, Ben. Some cool uh, DVs. And we're gonna move over now to Janie. Hi, everyone. All right, so today I wanted to show you um, how to register for other events that um, the product strategy hosts, the product strategy team hosts. Um, so currently right now, uh, we are watching the analytics live webinar of November 2022. I hope you can see my screen. Can you confirm, Alex? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so if you wanted to see more events that's hosted by the Oracle Analytics product strategy team, what we are doing is we are actually posting them in customer cl Cloud Customer Connect as well. Um, the way you would go find them is you go to events and analytics. And then as the page loads, so you will see um, the events that we um, host. So recently in September, we did do a how to start your data analytics and AI journey. Um, we will have another one um, coming in 20, early 2023. Um, and so if it does default to upcoming events, you should see one um, for 2023 uh, whenever we do get it posted. But just so you know, um, that is an um, area that you can find more, more, uh, more videos and, and more webinars like these. Um, from here, I'll pass it back to you, Alex. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, and as she mentioned, we're, we're hosting more and more events on Cloud Customer Connect. There's also other events that Oracle hosts um, for other products. So take a look at that link and register and join us. Okay, now we're going to move over to um, a roadmap update for Oracle Analytics Cloud with Gabby. Welcome, Gabby. Thank you, Alex. Um, so Thank you all for joining us. Uh, I'm Gabi Rubin. I run the product management organization for Oracle Analytics uh, uh, Cloud and Oracle Server. Uh, we can move to the next slide, uh, Alex. Um, so we are, the year is coming to an, uh, to an end. Our Oracle Analytics Cloud customers are now uh, receiving the last update of the year, which is the November update. And we are, uh, of course, getting ready to start a, a fresh year. Um, our schedule for next year is going to be very similar to 2022. Um, we are going to maintain our bi-monthly release cycle. Uh, of course, with the first update of the year is planned plan for January. Um, usually in, during Q1, uh, we also release our update for uh, Oracle Analytics Server. 
uh, that brings all the capabilities that we brought to uh, to the cloud over 2022 to our uh, authentic server customers. If we can move to the next slide, um, that year, you know, 2022 was a very uh, busy year for us and feature rich in all the updates. And again, all these updates that uh, that we are seeing from March to November, um, almost each and every one of them will get to our to authentic server when we start uh, when we start the new uh, the new year. And uh, more information, of course, will be available publicly once we'll announce the, announce the, the release uh, officially. Um, going to the next slide, Alex. Um, some things that we would like to encourage you to try out uh, in respect to the November update is uh, we do have uh, in preview our export to Excel capabilities that allows you to export uh, both tables and pivots in workbooks uh, to Excel. Uh, it is it is an optional feature right now that you need to go to the console and turn it on as a preview. And it does allow you from the export um, function on the main toolbar to pick a specific visualization that is either a table or a pivot and export that to Excel with uh, while maintaining formatting like date formatting, number formatting, and so on. Uh, the next item I'll uh, highlight is our new uh, slider uh, filter. Uh, we are, um, you know, we keep on going our dashboard filter capabilities in respect to uh, the uh, dashboard filter bar that you can put on the canvas to, for consumer to interact with. Um, the slider is a new way, uh, a new visual way to interact with single selection of uh, different attributes. And while doing the slider, we also added an ability to use it as an automated uh, player. Uh, so you can have, uh, if you have a dashboard that you would like to animate or uh, for people's viewing, you can actually uh, use that as a player based on your own custom uh, interval or any other, or a presets interval. Uh, the next item uh, is uh, with Auto Insights. So we introduced Auto Insights earlier uh, in 2022, uh, and it's based on completely on an automated uh, system that identify interesting behaviors in your data sets as the data sets get updated. Uh, we now added a bit of uh, more flexibility for uh, for the users to be able to direct the insights to show them uh, insights specifically to uh, data elements that they might be interested in. So there is uh, there is a setting screen where you can actually change the the default the the column selection that the algorithm did to focus on specific columns that you want to get insights for. So if you see insights for profits or sales, and and you actually interested in more way insights about gross unit price. Uh, you can just make that uh, that change. Of course, you can also do that for attributes as well. Uh, the last item I would uh, recommend for you to explore is uh, the present area. Uh, there is a lot of things that we are adding uh, to the present area, and there is a lot of things that will actually plan to come in 2023 as well. Uh, the last addition is really to be able to change the... Uh, the, the the look and feel of the of the header bar uh, with uh, the ability to place images, changing colors, even remove the header bar completely. Uh, for those of you that uh, that are not familiar with the present area in workbooks, this is where you can actually you can also change uh, which options uh, which uh, options your uh, uh, your dashboard consumers will get when they are actually viewing the dashboard. So I do encourage you to explore that uh, function as a whole. Now going into the next uh, to, into the new year, uh, there are quite few projects that are ongoing. These are some of the highlights project that you can expect to see. Uh, and uh, uh, overall, it's uh, it's going to be uh, we hope another feature packed year for us. Uh, I'll start, I'll, I'll quickly go to some of the, uh, the, the, the projects that are currently running and are scheduled for next year. 
Uh, the introduction of parameters and variables for workbooks uh, that uh, will allow you for various use cases from filtering to expressions and so on. Um, the enable to distribute workbooks by email as PDF or images, uh, sharing data flows between uh, multiple people that might want to either co-author or execute data flows, uh, role-based filters in data sets to be able to define filters, uh, data filters based on the specific uh, user role and permissions, uh, new homepage capabilities that you will start seeing both in respect to uh, the amount of content that you can show on the homepage as well as new capabilities like uh, live insights that you can uh, put on the homepage itself, uh, fine grain permission which will allow you to turn off certain features in the product based on user roles. Uh, one key example is that we hear for customers is the ability to turn off export capabilities in some cases, but uh, of course, a lot of other uh, a lot of other features and permissions that we are planning to introduce. Uh, we're going to have a mobile app uh, up, update, which will uh, which will uh, basically improve a lot of the mobile rendering that we do for content, simplified, and does and and offer better navigation. And also a very important uh, request that came was uh, was catalog uh, navigation, uh, uh, catalog navigation to be able to pick uh, artifacts directly from the from the folder structure of the catalog. Uh, enhance auditing capabilities to allow admins to audit activities in the system. Uh, again, a good example is uh, export that are being done and detailed usage by users. And lastly, that's not auto M, that's auto ML, and uh, OCI language integration uh, will provide more capabilities in respect to using machine learning and uh, text analytics uh, uh, functions within OEC. Uh, the last thing I will flash on the last slide is, of course, there are a lot of many items on the next slide. Yes, thank you, uh, which are uh, coming. So, um, and hopefully, uh, you know, you'll, you'll get to use and provide us feedback for all the new capabilities that we that we are planning to provide. With that, Alex, thank you, thank you, and back to you. Thanks, Gabby, for the update. A lot of new and exciting stuff coming out for a packed schedule, uh, especially in January. There, let's move over and see what's going on with uh, FAW and the roadmap. Welcome, Stefan. Thanks. All right, hello everyone. My name is Stefan. I head up product management for Fusion Analytics. And what I thought I'd do at first here to kick it off is just provide a quick overview of Fusion Analytics for the folks on the, the call here that are not yet familiar with this product offering. So Fusion Analytics is essentially a turnkey analytics solution that we purpose built and designed for Fusion Cloud application customers. And essentially what it does in a nutshell is it moves your Fusion Cloud application data automatically into an instance of the autonomous data warehouse and then through the power of the Oracle and this cloud allows you to drive a broad set of analytic use cases across the different fusion pillars, you know, ERP, HCM, CX and supply chain management. So Oracle kind of assumes complete um, responsibility for running the entire data pipeline end to end, you know, so when there ever there are changes in the fusion cloud application schema, hierarchy changes, all of that automatically flows through automatically into Fusion Analytics, so you don't have to worry about the pipeline breaking or any other content breaking that you have built on top of that. The solution already comes with a rich set of prepackaged um, best practice content, so there's a rich semantic model, pre-built reports and dashboards that really are designed to get you started quickly. In a nutshell, essentially, this product is the best of two worlds. It's a, it's a SaaS product because it allows you to get up and running quite quickly with the out of the box um, offering um, um, content that we provide, but it's also a pass offering. So it's not limited to just fusion data only. In fact, it's designed for you to bring in data from other sources and apps. Um, we have an, an extensibility framework and through the power of ADW and OEC, you can basically meet your specific needs and requirements. Now, um, the product has really matured quite a lot over the last um, year or so. We've um, you know, drastically expanded you know, the coverage of Fusion Analytics across you know, a number of different functional areas of the Fusion pillars. 
Um, the product also has really matured in terms of um, being a platform for customers, you know, to extend with data from other sources and apps and obviously build their own custom content. Now, Fusion ERP Analytics is the first um, product that we brought to market as part of the, the Fusion Analytics product family. The initial focus was on core financial analytics. So we took data from GL, AP, and AR. We then expanded into spend expenses and procurement data. Most recently, we also got into project analytics, um, which we're continuously building out. Now, a couple of notable items here on the roadmap are um, in the context of core fin um, financial analytics. We are adding support for much better cross-finance analytics with the support of so-called configurable account analysis. This is a highly demanded feature by a lot of our existing ERP analytics customers and essentially will provide you know, finance users with a uh, composite view of end-to-end -end GL account activity with um, subledger transactional details for selected sources. Um, we are furthermore working on an integration with the accounting hub um, that will also provide um, much deeper fine grain subledger analysis capabilities. Um, a connector for EPM is in the works. Um, this will allow you to bring in you know, budgets and forecasts into Fusion Analytics and then alongside the actuals in Fusion ERP Analytics um, drive you know, variance analysis related to use cases. Again, I already mentioned projects. Um, we're continuously building out project analytics. And on the roadmap, we have the addition of project invoices, project performance, and grants. Now, ATM analytics is obviously all about providing um, deep workforce insights um, that impact how your organization hires, um, supports, develops, and ultimately retains um, the workforce. Um, pretty good coverage already across core HR talent, um, payroll, absences, diversity, and so forth. Um, we are planning to build out talent analytics with um, support of talent profile, um, adding also analytics on top of compensation data, payroll costing, and so forth. In general, um, what you'll see us do is to, to shift focus more and more from the needs of HR specialists and analysts towards the analytic needs of people managers in the organization. And Manisha, on my team is going to show you a demo of HCM analytics a little later on. So chain mentioned analytics is still a relatively new offering as part of the FAW product family. We launched that at the end of last calendar year, but it has already good coverage across order management, inventory and purchasing. We're actually now getting into manufacturing analytics with um, support of work orders. And then we have a number of other modules and functional areas we are planning to cover in the next calendar year, including supply chain planning, global trade management, and more. And then finally, um, that we have CX Analytics. That is actually the latest addition to the FAW product family. We just launched that a couple of months ago, back in July of this calendar year. Um, currently, the product combines data from the front, middle, and back office to, to give you really a comprehensive view across the entire B2B revenue waterfall and lead to cash process. And we're now working on um, supporting account-based marketing analytics um, with insight into marketing attribution effectiveness. We are building out support for analytics on subscription management and B2B service management. And then furthermore, we're also um, planning to add support for data coming from quotes, incentive com, and pricing optimization. And then finally, obviously common to all of these four Fusion Analytics um, pillar products, we have a number of enhancements and new features planned you know, to further build out the extensibility framework, user security, um, other admin and developer features. Also in general, <clears throat> you should be aware of the fact <clears throat> that and initially our primary focus with all of the four Fusion Analytics um, um, products has been to obviously extend the, the coverage across all the different fusion appli um, application pillars, more and more functional area coverage. But we are most recently have really also started to invest heavily into using the power of machine learning and AI to go after kind of high value use cases. So on the ERP side, for example, you will see us introducing um, support for collection risk predictions on the HCM side, diversity analysis, survey analysis and so forth. So a lot of these um, use cases are still in preview. Um, we encourage customers to test them. And we want to make sure that they work consistently and reliably before we 
make them fully generally available. Now, um, as far as some of the other platform enhancements and new features are concerned, the data pipeline is getting a lot of focus um, based on customer demand. We are providing more insight into the Oracle data pipeline in terms of the status of pipeline runs. Um, we're planning to provide notifications when a pipeline run is at the risk of running late. We are also enabling more frequent intraday data refreshes for select functional areas. So uh, for example, for a GL, you'll be able to, to run a data refresh um, every few hours versus just on a nightly basis. Um, in general, we're also investing heavily into making it much easier for you to bring in data from other apps and sources with so-called managed data pipelines. So very similar to how Oracle manages the pipeline for Fusion Cloud application data, you'll be able to define you know, what slice or area of data you want to bring in from the likes of salesforce.com or Google Analytics. And then Oracle will just assume the responsibility of running that data pipeline end to end so you don't have to worry about ETL and so forth. Um, OEC app consolidation is designed for existing OEC customers to, to more easily move to um, Fusion Analytics and adopt that solution uh, while maintaining their investment into what they've already built with OEC. So this essentially will allow you to bring in a um, semantic model and a catalog from another OEC instance into Fusion Analytics and merge it with the RPD and the catalog in FAW and thereby essentially provide your users um, in the organization with a single pane of glass to consume both the Fusion Analytics content alongside the content that is powered by your existing OEC implementation. And then finally, on the longer term product roadmap and our future direction is our intention to make Fusion Analytics really an integral part of the core Fusion app, um, embedding, integrating, you know, Fusion Analytics insights deeply into the, the core workflows that Fusion application users engage in on, on a day-by-day -day basis. So as we make progress on that front, we'll definitely share more details in upcoming OE Live events. And that's it. I'll turn it back to Alex. Thank you. And, and Stefan, uh, we just have one question from an auditor. It's um... Is FAW available for EPM? Yeah, as I mentioned, um, so we don't have a dedicated uh, SKU for EPM, but we are working on integration with EPM. So if you're an Fusion ERP customer and you want to bring in data from EPM, so namely budgets and forecast data, that will be supported um, fairly soon in upcoming release um, next year. Perfect. Thank you. Back to you, Alex. Thanks, Stefan, for that update. Let's take a look at the art of the possible with Barry. Welcome, Barry. Yeah, thanks, Alex. And what I'm going to show you today is just, you know, we have some demos. People ask me, how do I get my hands on this and start to use this and, and try it out? And um, one of these things is, uh, what do we do? So we get to this homepage, and I'm going to show you a few cool things you could try yourself, and then we're going to show you how to actually get to it. So here's the homepage. And when you get in there, it's not like it's stumped. And what do we do? We start to use natural language. So we can start to use uh, a nice, simple query. And I can ask for metrics, two metrics, uh, let's say revenue and uh, discount. And then we add the dimension. So we want to say buy, uh, let's say, uh, customer segment, see who's buying it. And let's say buy product type, what are they buying? And then by doing that, I might get the answer to my question. Natural language is totally built in. A question I get quite often is like, how much is the, how much extra is the natural language module? And how do we integrate it? Uh, well, with OAC, it's included. There's no extra price. The full functionality is there for both natural language processing and generation. Um, no integration project required at all. Um, and as we move into the next one, I'll show you the generation part. It's simple as well. You know, open up any of the, um, demo dashboards you have and the simple process is just to come in here and let's say pick this particular visualization i'm going to duplicate it i got two copies and the way that oac works is it treats the visualization objects uh, for the natural language as if it was a pie chart or a line chart it doesn't distinguish any real difference so here within our different types of charts available in context of these data items i can switch it here to this little speech bubble which is the language narrative and as I do that, it's actually real time changing this chart that you see here on the left into a narrative. And I can 
quickly grab and it's really easy to move charts and things around on the OAC. You can see I'm following the green bar. I'd like to drop mine just here where it's gonna be big and I can see it's pretty verbose. So right here on the left, I can see the level of detail. And if I want less in a, you know, uh, text, I can just bring that down a notch and that should reduce the amount of text until I've got the kind of level I'm expecting. And as I always show, you know, if I want to do it in French, um, it's built in. So there's something you'd very cool you can try, a simple kind of thing, a few clicks and you're doing something really powerful. Um, you can always build with your own data sets, um, something like this, um, simple, typical kind of dashboards that you would expect. But I want to show you something that's kind of a little bit different and extending on that. So the next one I'm going to look at is uh, something that's newer in OAC is the advanced composite visualizations. Now, there's a couple of things that are great about this. Um, the firstly is you can have more metrics and information per visual, and that does two things. The first thing is it reduces the number of visual objects you have on the screen, making the productivity increase. There's less administration. I wouldn't have had to create a tile um, and the chart for the scatter chart and then another tile and a bar chart. It's just less objects and they're all still working as first class objects with each, each other. So all the kind of interactions that you expect will be available. So I could just as well, you know, select something on this chart. I can do some selections here and see how they relax. But advanced composite visualizations also allow you to, the second thing, is to allow you to put more information on a certain amount of space. And as you increase the information density, it's making a single dashboard provide more information without having to create more tabs or have more objects. It's giving more information to help the decision process without adding complexity. So that um, information density is a very cool thing to look at. So the question comes in, well, how do we do this? Well, if I come to the next screen uh, here, you will see that I have the page open. And this is the link. You'll find this link. Ben posted it into the chat. It'll come up to something like this when you get to see the Oracle Analytics Public Library. Now, when you see the OAC Live, you don't have to have a login. We're not going to ask you for a credit card. We're not going to get you to do an SSO or anything. You just click onto that, and it will open up a public instance. Now, it's a little bit locked down so that nobody can basically destroy it, but um, you get to see a few interesting projects um, that I'm going to show you a couple of these in a second. And also Jamie's going to show you this cool uh, concert venue one at the end. So um, as I as you get into this, this is literally the view that you'll get and you can open up any of these kind of views and you'll get projects like this. And this one actually talks about um, what is included within the Fusion Analytics and the flavors of those kind of projects. And as I move through these, let's say, um, this is to give you some ideas of how you can change your kind of, um, uh, you can change and uh, use some of the kind of concepts in your projects. So right here, I'm looking at all four Fusion Analytics products and we're wondering like what's included in that. And you wanna know what metrics, what dimensions. Well, here we have on-screen filters, like right on the canvas. And I say, if I'm interested in ERP, I can just come in here and select ERP. Now I'm focused on FA for ERP and I can see all the modules that are included. Now, Stefan talked about some of these, but you can see everything that you need. And here, obviously, um, here's receivables, there's payables. Um, if I wanted to look at what was actually within the receivables module, I can select that. And now I can see the different AR kind of subject areas. And we go all the way down to the metrics level. And I can come over here and say, well, if I don't know what the metrics are, what metrics are available, I can again focus using these filters and we can see all the metrics that are actually available and a description of those. So a dashboard, again, doesn't have to just be pie charts and line charts. Uh, you know, you can use this to generate any kind of project with interactivity to get the information across that you need. Another one that's cool, different again, um, here's one that's simple in the style of what Ben creates. Um, here with the eye that can kind of look at you as it moves, you know, it's got some kind of cool watches you where you go, uh, unintentional <laughs> capability. But again, ideas of how you can use information that suits what you're showing. Um, and I'm gonna just give you some ideas, you know, really come into these projects, have a look at how these things work together. Um, sometimes there's no data available, but you know, there's all interactive and you can literally play with this project yourself. So I suggest you come into here, find that link, come and choose the projects, if you click on view all, you can see there's a ton of different projects, a lot of them which I have shown in the past and which I will show in the future. We are adding to this library, but come along, try them out, and um, these are all available to you. So thank you, and I'll pass it back to you, Alex. Thanks, Barry. All right, let's move forward here. Okay, we're going to take a look at filter, property new UX, and new tile viz with 
Avinash. Thank you, Alex. All right. Um, hey, everyone. I'm on the Oracle Analytics product management team. I'm going to start with a few of the features that Gabby had highlighted uh, as part of November 2022 release, and then I'll also demo a couple of upcoming features for the January release. Uh, so on my canvas here, the first feature I'm going to show is the new filter experience. Uh, so I have a canvas where I've got a few visualizations, a dashboard filter bar, and uh, you know my requirement is to be able to add a, a, a slider uh, that I want to sort of autoplay, right, these visualizations. So it's pretty easy to do. Um, my use case is based on time, so I want to bring in like the order year into my dashboard filter bar. And uh, when you go to the property of um, uh, the filter control, um, we've added a new filter type called slider, which when you change uh, from the default list of an attribute uh, or a, a field, it changes to a slider option. Um, and, uh, you know, I had this uh, player turned on. Um, so when you have the play player turned off, it's going to act as a natural slider and the user can manually, uh, you know, move the, uh, the slider uh, uh, to the next value in, uh, in the filter. Or if you have uh, an option to do a cool demo, you know, projected in your big screens to sort of autoplay this in a loop, you can do that. Just turn on the player functionality. Um, and the player functionality uh, has a few options to sort of control the speed. Uh, by default, it's set to the regular speed of uh, three seconds. And uh, you can also uh, turn on the auto loop, right? Which means that once it goes to the last value, it again, uh, you know, starts to autoplay uh, uh, the, the values uh, for this particular filter. So let me go ahead and hit uh, play and see you know how the feature works. It's pretty smooth in terms of how the experience is. And uh, you know you can see that the, uh, the, the visits are naturally refreshing real time for the next value uh, of the slider uh, in this particular case. Um, dashboard filter also has additional functionalities. Uh, like for example, in my case, I've added a reset button. So it's very easy for me to hit the reset button to go uh, to the first value uh, or the, to the original state of the slider, slider in this particular case, right? So it's a, it's a November 2022 feature. It's a pretty cool functionality. Um, so please take a look at it. Uh, and we're also adding more investment in present. Uh, one of the areas that uh, we've been focusing on is to provide a, a more uh, you know, a custom uh, a, a carpet feel uh, for your consumer experience users right within your organization. So as part of the change, um, what we have done is uh, we've added some properties to control your header bar, right? So this is the top header bar that is visible to your end users when you share the workbook as a dashboard. Now you have the option to uh, customize the header bar. Um, as you see on my screen, uh, right, I've added an image, right, I've added an Oracle logo because I want to sort of provide that carpet feel, uh, look and feel for my dashboards. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty simple image that I've added and I've sort of uh, set the properties of the image to be out of fit in terms of height and width. And uh, when the end users load the dashboard, right, it's going to have a natural feel, display the logo, uh, right? It's going to sort of gel together within your carpet um, set of branding and logos, if you like. So this is also an November 2022 feature. Uh, please give it a try. Let us know your feedback. And then the last one is export to Excel. Uh, this is in public preview, which means that the administrator uh, has to turn on this feature. And when it's, once it's turned on, all of the users uh, will get access to export your table and pivot table data with formatting uh, to Excel, right? So I'm gonna, maybe I'll just show a, a quick demo of the pivot table, which has got some formatted content. It's not a lot of data, uh, but you can see that the header uh, and I've got a color, uh, you know, added to uh, the pivot table with definition. And when you go to the export option, you would now see a new option to export to Excel. Um, and then let's just call it pivot. And when you click on save, <laughs> it's gonna export the data. It's gonna retain, uh, take all that formatting that you have on your uh, pivot table visualization. And uh, it's basically gonna export it as uh, an Excel file. So I'll open up the Excel file um, from here. And uh, we'll quickly show you how the exported content looks like. Uh, let me... All right, my Excel is opening up. So while that comes up, uh, you know, we can move over to the next feature and come back and see how the exported uh, file looks like. So this is also a feature that's available in November. Uh, like I said, it's in public preview. For the upcoming January release, uh, there are a couple of features that I want to highlight. One is uh, an experience change for the author person in particular. Uh, so when you uh, create a new workbook, um, right, um, we are introducing a new experience for the property panel, right? So uh, before I go there, you can see that the property panel for uh, the current experience is that uh, when you click on a visualization, 
uh, the property panel is below the data panel, right? So there's often a need to uh, you know, expand this property panel, uh, which hides the columns in the data panel. And you know, it's, it's sort of a user experience challenge that we're trying to address with the new experience. So let me go ahead to a new server and create a new workbook and uh, let's connect to our data set. Um, and let's try to build uh, a, visual, a simple visualization, right? I'll maybe bring in uh, a revenue measure into my, uh, so when I drop that, notice that there's a little uh, help text that displays to the user that, hey, click here to view the properties. And uh, we've moved the property panel from below the data panel and to be adjacent to the grammar of the visualization, right? What this allows us, uh, the author to do is to be able to see the data panel and the toggle between the grammar and the properties panel, uh, right, while building the content, right? So it becomes a natural uh, uh, extension uh, to your user experience in a way where, uh, you know, you don't, you no longer have a need to sort of hide the data panel in order to see the list of properties, right? Um, so uh, uh, the properties that you see on the new layout is exactly the same properties that we have for the individual visualizations. The layout is not changed in any way. Um, and, uh, you know, it is a bit of experience change for the author persona to sort of orient uh, and figure out, uh, you know, where the new property panel is located. But once you sort of orient yourself, it becomes a, a natural way to sort of build your content. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we hope that this experience will, will, will definitely improve from a productivity perspective, right? And uh, I think my Excel is opened up. So let me, let me see if I can grab that for you. Okay, here is my Excel file. Uh, so here's a, uh, the pivot table that we were trying to export. And uh, like I said, all of the formatted data is, is sort of exported as is uh, into an Excel format. Uh, we do have a limitation of 25,000 rows that you can export uh, in the public preview mode, uh, which we do hope to uh, uh, you know, uh, remove uh, or maybe have a, add a upper governor limit when we take this uh, feature uh, uh, to be a generally available feature for all our customers. And uh, for my last demo, uh, I want to highlight on one of the visualizations that's upcoming in January. Uh, so it's a newer version of tile visualization. So we have an existing tile visualization, uh, but the current problem or challenge with that tile visualization is that uh, users can only add one metric, right? And there's always, uh, we've heard a lot, uh, tons of feedback from, from, from you that uh, there's a need to add multiple metrics and, uh, and present your KPI tiles in a, in a more uh, uh, cumulative way, right? So the new tile will allow you to basically do exactly that. Um, so you can add multiple meshes um, to a tile visualization. So I've got three different tile visualizations here. I'll go into the edit mode. And uh, you can see that, uh, you know, I've sort of formatted and the layout of the meshes uh, is also uh, pretty flexible and uh, configurable from an author perspective. Uh, this provides a lot of options to uh, visually sort of represent your KPIs in a, in a pretty appealing way, right, for your, for your end users. Um, if you go to the WIS panel, uh, you would see that the new tile visualization um, resides along with uh, the legacy tile, which we will call a style, uh, and it will soon be deprecated once we have all of the functionalities from the existing tile to uh, on the new version of the tile. Um, and um, uh, the the last thing I want to highlight is the conditional formatting rules, which will make it a lot easier to sort of format the data and again make the visualization more uh, appealing for your end users, right? So let me open up the conditional formatting dialog, and you can see that I've added a, a couple of rules: one for sales, and then there's one for quantity ordered, right? And uh, let's go ahead and turn on these rules, uh, and you will notice how these rules sort of behave based on whether a measure is a primary measure, which is the first measure on my tile, versus uh, if a measure is a, a secondary measure. So on my uh, on my on on this whiz, I'm going to right click, go to conditional formatting, and then turn on the sales rule, and it's going to basically color the entire tile. Uh, the rule has passed, uh, right? My my sales is above nine million dollars, so the tile basically changes color to green, so I'm in a good state. Now, if you apply the same rule on this visualization, notice that sales is a secondary measure, and uh, turning on the rule will basically apply the color as uh, as a background color for the value. Uh, of this metric in this particular case, right? So that's kind of the difference. And you can further apply a rule for the primary measure uh, for quantity ordered, right? Uh, and it sort of differentiates and provides, uh, you know, more functionalities for the author to design and apply and format the rules, or format the data based on these conditional formatting rules. And uh, uh, so this uh, new tile visualization is uh, being scheduled for the January 2022 update. Uh, 
And, and that concludes my demo. Do give uh, these features a try and share your feedback with us and I'll pass it back to you, Alex. Thank you. Some interesting stuff coming up and let's take a look at REST API, which was just released. We're gonna take a look at uh, what that is and how you can get started with it with Gabrielle. Thanks for the introduction, Alex. Um, so my name is Gabrielle. I'll be giving a short presentation and a demo on the REST API connector. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with what a REST API is, it's essentially a way that systems exchange data securely over the internet. So within the context of Oracle Analytics, we've built a REST connector that allows you to connect to a variety of sources without actually having to write any code. So you can do it right through the UI. Um, so on the slide, I've included some examples of data sources that you can connect to using the REST connector. So some of the examples would be certain SaaS applications like Workday, you can connect to a variety of public sources, really there are a lot of options. Um, something else to note is that we currently support basic auth, no auth, and HTTP header authentication. And then one more thing to know also is the feature is in preview. Um, so if you want to try this out, you'll have to go manually enable the feature in the system settings through the console. So I'll walk you through what this looks like in the console in my demo, but I just want to touch on a few concepts first. Um, so the first step really in using this product is to create a connection to the REST API through the OAC console. So there are two main ways you can create a connection. Um, the first is you can upload a predefined JSON template, or you can enter the REST connection parameters manually. So the JSON template essentially just contains a lot of the information that you would need to manually fill in if you wanted to do it through the UI. Um, I encourage you to also take a look at the analytics public library. There are a number of uh, those predefined JSON templates that we have up on that site. So you can kind of get started, uh, start playing around with some of the APIs. Um, in terms of the parameters that you need to fill out, you'll need to specify a connection name. You need to also provide a REST based URL, which you can kind of think of as a base address for the API you're using. And then you'll also have to add any endpoints that you want to use, and you can specify a method of authentication, um, which I mentioned previously, it's no auth, basic auth, or HTTP header. Um, and it really just depends on which API you're connecting to. So at this point, I will go into the console and I'll show you uh, what this looks like. So essentially what you'd need to do um, is you'd go up and hit create and you'd create a connection. And uh, once you've actually enabled the, um, the feature through the console, it should pop up here. So you can select REST API. And as I mentioned, you can either upload the JSON file with the um, parameters already specified, or you can manually go in and type them in. So um, these are some of the parameters that you will have to fill out. I'm going to show you one that I already created. Um, so I'm connecting to SpaceX's API. So here I have my REST base URL, the endpoints that I'm wanting to use. And in this case, I don't need a method of authentication to connect to this specific source. So I will close this. Um, this is a data set that I created using that SpaceX REST API connection you can see right here. Um, these are the schemas that are populated and the actual tables that I'm interested in are located in this auto REST schema here. So you can see that I've pulled over this capsule endpoint table. And this is just an example of some of the information that was returned. And I actually went and I created a, uh, a workbook and a canvas using this information. So um, this is just some of the data that was returned from that uh, API. So afterwards, if anyone has any questions about the API, I'd be happy to answer them, um, but I will hand it back over to Alex. Thank you. Interesting stuff there. Definitely gone and explored that myself. Let's take a look at the uh, FAW HCM demo with Manisha in our last few minutes here. Thank you so much, Alex. Okay, so we saw a lot of really good stuff today. Um, in the end, all of them is about running a business. And all of us on the call today who have teams and people reporting to us probably do want to make very informed decisions. So, uh, so far the product has worked, our FAW HCM product, we have had a deep focus on enabling our HR organizations, answer their business questions, 
And although we do answer lots of questions for people managers and people leaders, we are now pivoting to uh, prioritize the questions that these people have. Before I take you to a few demos um, in the product, I just want to share why this is so important for all of us. Uh, a, when it comes to running a business, costs matter, right? And workforce cost tends to be highest in many of the industries we all work in. So I'm seeing numbers anywhere from 20 to 70 percent of the OPEX being workforce cost. And I don't think any one of us needs to be convinced that the future of any business or organization is the talent or people. So making informed people decisions is super important. Even in this survey from Deloitte um, talks about the importance of talent and labor and growth. Um, so no matter which leader we talk to, the head of sales, head of engineering, finance, CFO, CXO, CHRO, we are seeing a high increase and in, uh, interest in understanding people and people decisions. Here are a few titles which uh, within our customer base who, who are using people analytics not just for HR leaders, but also for people leaders. And uh, and the way they're making this work, and in fact, the HR leaders are promoting and partnering with people leaders and people managers across their organization, is HR tends to focus on the central governance, right? It's the ethical aspects of analytics, making sure all of us use the same definition for attrition. At the same time, it's really like Avinash talked about, Gabby talked about, Barry talked about, Stefan talked about. We want to be able to enable all these leaders to, to self-fulfill their needs, right? Play with the tools themselves, answer their own business questions. Um, and increasingly, uh, a lot of, lot of us are wanting to do that. So I'm going to take a quick uh, shift and show you a demo now on some dashboards that we have built. And my ask here would be, um, our focus again is on answering business questions, right? And uh, we have taken a, an attempt to answer a few, but if there are questions top of mind for any of you when it comes to making people decisions, please do reach out and uh, let's partner on this together. So we have a few uh, pre-built dashboards. So this is a Fusion Analytics Warehouse. You go here, you go to projects, within projects, uh, you'll see some pre-built folders within shared, all of us have access to it, and you'll go to Oracle. Now I'm using an internal demo pod, so just ignore the data um, a little bit here, but uh, within Fusion HCM, we have a new folder, it's called People Leaders Dashboards. The focus here, again, it's a starting point, focus here on is answering the business questions that are top of mind for some of our people leaders. So today's era, right now, see again, heavy attrition, there's a lot of shift going on. We are looking at the resources and investments we have made already. And some of us are looking at how we can re-channel this energy or the you know, reskill our own people, our own workforce to do projects, right? So in a quick glimpse, um, this dashboard is called Tag Team Profile Overview. Uh, we, we can see that of, of in this specific environment, about 1,200 people have their people profile filled up in the HCM cloud. And uh, 983 of those have been marked as loss of, uh, at a risk of loss by their managers. Again, this is demo data. This uh, may not be exactly accurate or industry standard, but the important thing here to highlight is in one quick glimpse, I'm able to understand within my organization, what are the top 10 competencies? Well, problem solving is at least we believe or the managers believe or individuals believe they're marked that problem solving is a high uh, competency for them. And uh, planning and organizing, probably not as many people are as strong at. What are the licenses and certificates? What are the skills we have? Everything in one quick glimpse, I'm able to get a you know bird's eye view of my organization. I can also see across my organization, if I say have a 1200 people organization, how many people seemed to op, uh, seem to be at a risk of loss. So of the total, people who were marked as less risk of loss, a huge number of them seem to be people who've been within the organization for a long time, right? Um, and only a few newcomers are expressing uh, any, any uh, interest in leaving the organization. We also see that performance versus potential box, again, the whole organization is mapped in a quick glimpse. Now, what do I do with this information? Once I have a understanding of what my current organization looks like, I can now 
understand where my learning spend needs to be, right? And am I really using the learning opportunities to promote a positive health um, engagement for my organization? So here in this, again, one glimpse, we can see, well, what are the top learning items that people are interested in or my managers have expressed interest or have in encouraged the teams to do. Some of them might be compliance driven like the top one here, but a lot of them, I mean, this could have read AI ML, this could have read uh, Agile, this could have read anything that we wanted it to read. But right now, at least we know what we are promoting within our organization. We can see quite a few people who are in high potential um, or medium potential, medium uh, performance are actively involved in taking uh, some learnings, but we, there's nobody in the high and high. And often it happens that people who are high performers, we tend to give them opportunity, so much work that they don't have time for their self-growth. This again leads to burnout, right? So again, insights are all interconnected, but in one glimpse, the focus here is on enabling people leaders to ask business questions, which we would like to pro provide in a pre-built manner. There's a lot more information available in the data layer that I can answer you know, a lot more questions. These are just some examples. Um, and this is also interesting when you're not focused on learning, you'll often see very small portion of the population actually self-selecting themselves for learning. But the moment uh, leaders and HR start promoting learning, there's often a spike on a lot, many people enrolling for um, these learnings. Um, this is new right now, so we don't see a lot of people who have completed the enrollment, but at least they've started enrolling. So I'm going to let it stop it here, Alex. Um, there's much more in the product. Anyone interested, please do reach out. We would love to take you in an in-depth uh, tour here. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Manisha. That was a great overview and demo there. Of course, uh, there's definitely more and you can get deeper in depth there. But um, fortunately, we're running a little short on time. So I've got a few polls to pop up. And while I'm popping those up, if we could have the team uh, go in there and start answering any questions, you can just uh, ben, maybe you could read them off while I bring up the polls. Yeah, so let's see what type of questions we have, and maybe we can uh, we can answer some directly. So let's see. Um, I think Gabby. Okay, so we have one, which is: Can you try out the example from public OAC in our OAC OAS environment? And that is from Manish. And yes, Manish, you can do it. You can just download the example. Um, and we have also, I believe, a GitHub. Uh, so I will be uh, able to share the GitHub. But yeah, totally, we can do that. Um, any other question? I think Gabby, you were fast. So Gabby has been replying to all questions. So it's perfect. So we don't have much more. If we have maybe one or two last questions, we can answer. If not, uh, we can wrap up after the NPS survey. And I think we are good, Alex. Yeah, I'll just leave this up for one more second here as we close out. So thanks everyone for joining us uh, this Friday. We appreciate your time. Again, this is the last OA Live for this year. We'll be back in January, 2023. So. Uh, the Oracle Analytics team is wishing you all um, happy holidays, safe travel, and a happy new year. We will see you in 2023. Thanks, everyone.